And welcome, Joel Com here, and I am from the future. Well, not from the future, but I have been called a futurist because I have a knack for seeing the next big thing in technology and marketing. And being one of the early proponents of live video marketing, I've been at it since 2008, I've been able to call it on a number of things, and I'm going to call it now for 2017. What I believe we're going to see happen. Now, I'm not going to give you the easy, low-hanging fruit predictions, such as Facebook Live is going to grow, or Instagram is going, well, they actually they just launched their live now. Uh, it's not going to be that. It's not going to be, well, there's going to be new video services launching. Duh. We all know that. What I want to do is give you the bold predictions, the ones that make you sit up and go, oh, really? So let's jump right into it with prediction number one for 2017. And that is, and I've been saying this actually since early in 2016, that it's going to happen. But now we know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen in 2017. Snapchat is going to launch live. You will be able to go into the Snapchat app and go live. Why? Well, I think there's a few reasons for it. First of all, the competition is for the eyeballs, right? It's all about time watched. And with Facebook having live and Periscope having live and there being a number of other services, including the new Instagram live, Snapchat videos are short. They're 10 seconds at a clip. And if you watch a bunch of them, you can stick around for a while. But Snapchat is known for being very experiential in the content that people share, so why not go live? What is the telltale sign that this has to happen? It's these. It's the spectacles. Spectacles are a setup for live. It is purely positioning for live. Now, the only reason I'm not wearing my spectacles right now is because I need prescription lenses and I can't see really well through the sunglasses on spectacles. I've sent them off to an optometrist and they are fitting me with custom prescription lenses. they will be bifocals and they will be the, uh, the chromatic ones where they change the tint based on how much sunlight you have access to. So they'll, they won't be completely clear, but they also won't be completely dark. They'll change. And they're coming, and I'm planning on using them as I walk around Denver, but this is the perfect setup for Snapchat to be able to go live. It's one thing to be able to send 10 second videos to your phone. It's another to Bluetooth to your phone and have that with a, a long press of the button, have you be live to your Snapchat followers. And I believe that's coming. I think Snapchat would be foolish for not doing that. I'm not sure what the technological um, uh, obstacles are in the way from making that happening. But I think that we can say pretty surely that uh, that, that is going to happen and come our way. So that's prediction number one. Snapchat live feature is coming. And I think it's going to be a very big deal. In fact, Snapchat's been giving Facebook a run for their money for the for, you know, a certain audience to the point that Facebook is trying to copy so many Snapchat features. But remember, Snapchat is a hardware company now. They are a camera company. Does this mean Facebook is going to come out with some goggles of their own? Uh, very possibly. It could happen. Oh, did I get upgraded to a gold badge? I wasn't aware of that. Very cool. So, that's number one. Let's move on to number two. Number two is that in 2017, virtual reality will become the trendy, the cutting edge holiday gift. It's not there yet. We have, this is my Oculus Rift goggles right here. I've had them since they shipped, I want to say in the summer. And these are the Oculus Rift hand controllers that allow you to do stuff in, uh, in VR. And it's a cool device, okay? It's $500 for an Oculus Rift. Still a little pricey for a gadget. You need a, a high-end PC like I have to be able to use it. Now, HTC also has the Vive. And of course, Microsoft is working on releasing the HoloLens. And there's going to be others. I'm sure Nintendo is going to come out with something. And while it's not going to go mainstream in 2017, I believe there will be a low price point enough product in virtual reality that 2017, it's what the kids are going to want 
slot for their video game system. We've yet the mainstream is is yet to come. That's going to happen in uh, in 2018 and 19. But 2017 VR is going to enter in for the uh, the early adopters and the kids are going to want them for their video game systems for whichever they're available. I'm assuming the HoloLens Microsofts will be available for Xbox and that Sony and Nintendo will have uh, something similar that they're going to be able to offer to people as well. So number two prediction for 2017, virtual reality becomes the holiday gift uh, for the early adopters that are going to want them. And number three, which is perhaps the uh, the boldest of my 2017 predictions, is this one. Twitter finally gets sold off to a media company. Now, when is this going to happen? Well, let's take a look at this, the, uh, the Twitter stock chart. You know, Twitter went public um, and they shot up to about $69 a share and it's been a rocky bumpy ride since then as of December 12th, 2016, just shy of $19 a share, not a profitable company, and they're having a hard time making a go of it. Well, uh, earlier in 2016, there were a number of companies that were shopping around for Twitter. I believe Microsoft or Google looked at it. I believe Disney looked at it. I believe uh, Salesforce looked at it, and, and none of them wanted to pay the price for Twitter. I believe Twitter is going to continue to sink. They don't have any obvious plan for a turnaround to bring, to keep users there because they, there's quite a bit of attrition on Twitter or to, to monetize it. Uh, Twitter ads and cards can be effective, but it's not nearly as easy to use as Facebook ads. And uh, they, they have an issue with monetizing, keeping users and monetizing the site. I believe we're gonna see a continued share uh, plunge. And I believe somewhere in the 10 to $12 range, they're going to get purchased by a media company. Why a media company? Because of Periscope. So there's some side predictions that go with this. First of all, Periscope is one of the best things that Twitter has going for it. Hello, we're here. Live video, it's present, it's in the moment, it's, uh, it, it's educational, it's inspirational, it's entertaining, it it's, uh, turns us all into citizen journalists in a moment. All we got to do is say, go live, and there's an audience of people that are watching us. So Periscope is hot, but here's the problem. Periscope as a brand doesn't need to be Periscope. Twitter already owns it. Why isn't it just Twitter Live? When I go into the Twitter app and I launch it, and I'm doing it right now on my phone, and I go to make a tweet, as I'm going to do right now, I click on tweet, and I'm going to show you what I see here. So right there, I can pull up pictures, I can put text, or I can use camera or video. Uh, if I go to video, uh, they have, you know what, something has happened here. They have removed, they have removed live video from the Twitter app. It's not even in here. I don't know, this is brand new. This is a, this is a new development. So uh, last time I looked at the Twitter app, Right next to, there was three icons here, and the third one was a Periscope icon. I don't know what's happened to it, but it was there where you would click it and you would go live on Periscope. Surprise, it's gone. I don't know why. It Periscope should just be Twitter live. That's it. People know Twitter. They understand live. They don't know the Periscope brand. Twitter already owns it. Just turn it into Twitter live and the streams automatically show on Twitter just like Periscope's do and you don't need to download another app. Just put it in the app. This is one of the areas that Twitter is failing. There's been so many. Removing the social share counts from the social share buttons is just another example of how they've stumbled. But Twitter is so embedded and enmeshed in our culture right? There's over 320 million active users. And everywhere you go, movies, television, newspapers, magazines, online, we understand at username. We understand hashtags. People get Twitter that is embedded in our culture. So a media company is the perfect property to scoop up Twitter, to leverage the audience and the power of live video to become a broadcast medium. 
That's what Facebook's going for. Twitter's been copying Facebook all along. Why stop here? Yes, you want to keep it where you can engage and interact easily with the media that's being put out there, but Twitter will be acquired by a media company somewhere between $10 and $12 a share. It'll be a bargain basement for the number of users that are out there. And, uh, and maybe, just maybe, a new team that doesn't include Jack Dorsey or current Twitter leadership, sorry guys, and um, features live video can be the one that revives Twitter and brings them back to the uh, the forefront. So that's what we're going for. I believe that's what we're going to see in uh, um, in 2017 in the live video world. Uh, let me turn off whatever is in the way there. That's not supposed to be on. There we go. And now you have my predictions. Now you know, that's what I think is going to happen. 2017 is going to be an incredible year for live video. As more businesses, brands get a hold and understand of the power of being able to instantly go live and reach a captive audience with a message that educates them, that inspires or motivates them, that entertains them, that brings them into an experience that allows them to connect human to human, as my friend Brian Kramer would say. So thanks for watching. And here on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have to say about that.